All right, Coach, go ahead. Okay, uh, how's everybody doing? Good. Good. Great. Good. Yeah. First of all, uh, we, we are, we're extremely excited to, to be headed to Sweet 16. Uh, I think uh, these guys have really paid the price to have this opportunity. You know, starting when they got on campus in June, and, and then through all our workouts, the summer workouts, the fall workouts, and through the adversity that they've been through. So it just shows you the character of these guys uh, to be in this position. They really earned it, and uh, we're looking forward to playing a great Michigan State team. Raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you, please. Uh, right here. Well, that's a good question. They're, they're, you know, first of all, they have a great Hall of Fame coach and one of the greatest coaches of all time, Coach Izzo, and he does a tremendous job. Uh, they're as good as anybody in the country on, on the off, with their offense. They're very efficient and also defensively. Uh, the, the main thing you got to do with them is you, you got to do a great job in your transition defense. You got to keep them out of transition. They score thirty percent of their points in transition, and we try to, you know, we got to get back and make them play against our set defense, and then. Uh, you know, we, offensively, we got to really execute because their defense, they're, they're number three in the country, field goal percentage defense and, and uh, score defense in the top 20. So we're going to have to do a great job on, on you know, our offense and our defense. Our offense got to help our defense. So uh, we're looking forward to the challenge. We, we had a great practice today. We'll go again in the morning and uh, we'll do a lot of uh, film work and, and we'll be prepared uh, on Friday. Michael, how much do you stress total team defense? It looks like it's really <coughs> spread around the scoring and yeah. everyone's capable. Well, it, it, obviously they have a great player, uh, player of the year in the league, Cassius Winston. He's really talented. He reminds me, when I was at Marquette, uh, you guys, Kimba Walker, who's at, with the uh, Charlotte Hornets, he reminds me of Kimba, you know, with his ability to score at all three levels, uh, to put a lot of pressure on the defense uh, in transition. And, and then they have uh, really good uh, inside players. Uh, uh, they got uh, Tillman, who's uh, very strong in the low post, and, and Nick Ward, and uh, Gomes. They have a really good low post. Then uh, probably the X factor is, is Matt, uh, uh, McQuaid, he's a really good shooter. He's a kid I've known when I was at North Texas. I've been with him a long time. Uh, I know him and know his dad. And he's a really good player, great leader for him. So they're just a solid all around team. Questions? Raise your hand. Michael, go ahead. Then we'll come up to Scott. You mentioned Tom. I know the team was on the court and they have to perform, but do you relish a challenge like this going up against a guy that's pretty well respected in the game? Well, I mean, uh, we're not going to win that battle. I'm not going to try that. <laughs> but anyway, no, coaches, i got much respect for Coach Izzo. Obviously, this is that speaks for itself. And, you know, our staff is looking forward to preparing our guys. And it's not going to be us against Coach. We'll just prepare our guys the best we can and, uh, you know, make game and end game adjust, whatever we got to do to just have our guys ready to play. Yeah. Uh, how much you get to play Very close parties. Well, it seems that you games about all kind of games. How, how have you dealt with that this year? I mean, how have you guys adjusted? Can it serve you well in this in this situation like this in the tournament? Obviously, you got two more close games. Yeah. Well, uh, like we have played a lot. Obviously, eleven close games, like seven or eight points, something like that, and six overtime games in the league. Seven overall, six in the league. But what we try to do, I, I think, is a testament to these these guys. I said it earlier. The, the closest of these guys, the respect they have for one another. Uh, the trust they have in one another, their ability to make plays under pressure, that's rare, you know, that's, that's rare. I've been doing this a long time. You don't see that, uh, you know, with, with young players. Sometimes, they, you know, some players tend to wilt around the pressure. These guys, they just get stronger, you know, uh, and, and I think we try to prepare them through it for it. You know, we work on what we call, if you ask them, six-minute games. We just finished one in practice a minute ago. We work on six-minute uh, games. We, we make them in a situation where, yeah, six minutes to go, we're eight, eight or ten points down, and they got to play it out and make good decisions uh, down the stretch and, uh, and make plays. You got to have great players to, 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 to win game, close games like that. We got guys that can make plays. Coach, you get off to a fast start against Yale, you get off to a fast start against Maryland, and then the second half turns to kind of dog fights. How do you, if you're in that situation with Michigan State fighting, how do you combat that kind of slow second well, half? Yeah, guys, college basketball is a game of runs. I mean, you ask Duke. <laughs> I mean, they, I think, you know, it's the you know, greatest coach of all time, the greatest player in the game today. And they uh, played a solid UCF team. And I think you look around the, in the tournament, there's all everybody's playing close games. But uh, well, I think what we have to do is continue to, like I said, we got to prepare our guys to execute offensively solidly against a really good Michigan State team. Uh, and then we got to do a good job defensively. And if we're in that position, 
again, we just got to make the right plays. We got to get stops defensively. We got to finish those possessions with rebounds. Then you got to go down on offense again and grind it out and get good shots. And that's what we that's what we got to continue to do. Billy, Matt's kind of had a career that I don't think has lived up to some of the expectations that he probably had. But right now, he's playing really well. He's made some had some big games. How do you um, do you have to pay extra attention that to guys like? Seniors that are really coming on strong in, in these types of situations. Yeah, yeah, Billy. Uh, Matt, Matt is uh, you know he's had some injuries in his career. That's kind of held him back a little bit. But he's a really good player. He's a really he'll be one of the best defenders that Trey. He'll probably guard Trey that Trey's gone against. He I saw him defend Carson Edwards. He did a great job against Carson. Um, so he, he he can make shots. He shoots about forty four percent for the three point line. And he just makes big plays for him. So we got to do a great job of. Uh, Knowing where he's at in transition, that's the main thing. Cassius does a great job of pushing the ball and looking for Matt. And he's, 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 uh, he's made big shots for him throughout the season, so we got to do a great job with him. Brett? Uh, yeah, I'm curious if you can recall your initial thoughts when you realized that you were going to become the coaching face of this program. And what's it like now that you've been through the SEC through the first weekend of this and, it, and it's still going on? You're getting ready for a big, even bigger stage. Well, um, all I try to do when, when I was maybe intern is just concentrate on the kids. I mean, that's the most important thing is the players, making sure they have a great experience, making sure that not only me, but the staff, uh, we, we prepare these guys to, to uh, you know, to play every game, make sure that they, you know, block out the noise, you know, and I've talked about this before. All we can concentrate on is the moment we're in today to be the best that we can be and, and, and uh, go out and perform. And uh, that's what I try to do is just concentrate on the guys. So that made it easier for me because it's all about their experience. <coughs> Mike, uh, how much has Tremont's size made him the player that he is? If he was 6'4", he'd be a different style of guy. How much do you feel that that's pushed him to work as hard as he has? Well, I think you got to contribute that to, to Tremont's heart and his dad. I mean, you know, you probably can Google some videos when he's in 7th and 8th grade when his dad put him through some workouts now. <laughs> I mean, I was talking to uh, Coach Jones, uh, the Yale basketball coach, and Tremont used to go up to their gym and work out all the time when he was in junior high. And I think maybe even younger than that. So. He's, he's putting the time, guys, and worked on his game and, uh, you know, his ball skills, his shooting ability, uh, and he's become a great the, the defensive player. I mean, he's obviously been co-defense player of the year, and uh, and I think he's he's become a really good leader for us, too. I mean, he's a coach out there on the floor, so uh, we're just very fortunate to have him, and uh, I know he's looking forward to the matchup against Cassius on, on, uh, on Friday. Tony, when it comes to his own defense, what is the message to the team in terms of beating it if you are to see one and, and hopefully not struggle like you did uh, in the tournament? Well, I went back and looked at the zone. We had some good looks against the zone. We just sell too much. You want to, when you attack the zone, you want to play inside, outside. You know, in, in a 3-2, uh, that middle was wide open. We got the ball in the eyes. He had some good shots, but he missed about three of them, in, three of them inside. And we got to contribute that to the defense. But, you know, moving forward, we've got to have better ball movement. Okay? We have some set plays that we can run, but you got to – Make shots. At the end of the day, you got to make some shots. You know, if we had made a couple of threes early, they would have gotten away from that zone. You know, but we, we worked on that. We'll work on our execution, and we'll be prepared uh, when we play against uh, another zone at uh, Michigan State uh, position. Mike, how would you describe Brad Pye's uh, strengths <coughs> and your own strengths? Like, what do you feel like you guys collectively can do together? Well, you said Coach Hire? Yes. Oh, well, oh, Coach Hire is one of the best young coaches out there. I think he does a great job with his preparation. Uh, like he has this scout. I think he, he, you know we were talking. We were texting last night at two in the morning. You know different things that we were looking at. You know I was watching film. He's watching film. But uh, he's a basketball junkie. He does a great job of uh, taking an opponent and breaking them down. Uh, each player's weaknesses on uh, what we got to do to stop those players. Uh, offensively, what we need to you know run and probably be effective. And defensively, uh, what, what, what we got to do as far as guarding ball screens, or as far as defending the post. Do we want to trap the post. Do we want to let play one on one in the post. So I think he does a great job of that. And then. Uh, uh, he's uh, very fiery, you know. Greg does. He's fiery. He does a great job, uh, bringing uh, a lot of energy uh, every day. And uh, I think we play off each other. You know, he's probably a little bit uh, more fiery than I am at times. And, and then uh, Bill Usherong is probably in between both of us. <laughs> you know, Bill's probably the guy that uh, you know he's he's a more calmer guy between uh, uh, the three of us. Anything else? Anything, Scott? Scott and Tyler. Obviously, you guys have a pretty set rotation, but uh, I just, I'm just slightly curious. Marshall Graves played some good minutes for you guys late, late in the season and has not played uh, yet in the postseason. I'm just wondering, is there a role you'd like to see him play if you could? Or yeah. you don't want to mess with 
this, the rotation? Well, I, I think we thought about, uh, like, I, I leave substitution up to uh, uh, Coach Armstrong. He even did that when Coach Wade was here. He kind of handles our substitution uh, for us. And, and Marshall, we thought about putting him in the other night, you know, just that zone. Because we know he can make, he, he's, he's not bashful. He'll put it up and he can make shots. He's a good one of our better shooters. So, you know, I told him to be ready. You know, when Marshall, you may have to go in and make some, make some shots for us and make some plays for us. So, uh, it's a possibility, you know, he can play. So, but he's done a great job. He hasn't done, done. The other guys have played pretty well. Uh, speaking of that zone, you struggled against that against Maryland. It's been kind of a point uh, of a problem for you guys all season. Is that yeah. something y'all worked on this week, considering the teams you've gone up against? Yeah, yeah, we just we just worked uh, we just worked on uh, you know we'll work against the zone. You know, you never know. They had read a lot of possessions to the zone. Coach Shea's zone's always been a kind of a pack line man to man defensive team, you know, but uh, we'll be prepared for whatever that we uh, face this week here. Yeah, going off of that, I mean how, how big of a difference is it having this this week to prepare for a game like this rather than just the, the thirty six hours or however many it was against Maryland? Yeah, well it's just huge. Uh, first of all, the kids get a chance to rest. You know, we took uh, Saturday, I'm sorry, we took uh, Sunday and Monday off, uh, and our guys came back fresh. And, uh, you know, you, I, I said it the other day, you want to be, you know, light on their legs and heavy on their minds right now around this time. But we, we had a lot, get a lot of shooting in. Uh, we got, you know, our percentage may not be great, but we got some guys that can make shots. So we want to make sure that they uh, get a lot of shots up during this time right now. And, uh, you know, again, we'll be prepared. Brett? Yeah. Still curious, uh, and I'm sure you've talked about this a little in the past few weeks, but for people just getting to know LSU now and getting to know you, how would you describe, um, you know, your collaboration with the assistants, and what are the areas where you really feel like you have to take charge and make the decisions, what are the areas that you like, that, that you're kind of collaborating and deferring? Yeah, yeah I, I, what I try to do is, is um, you know, we're all involved in a game plan, you know, if it's, for instance, like uh, the Merrill Scout was Coach Armstrong, Bill Armstrong Scout, uh, but Greg Hire had input, I have input, and you know, we kind of break it down and talk about what we want to do. We want to run offensively, what we need to make, do defensively, if we want to make changes on different things. What personnel is going to work well together. So we talk about that. And I try to manage the game. You know, when I'm, I let those guys handle the bench a lot, you know, for substitution and different things. And if you know, we need to make adjustments, they may suggest to me, and I'll say, guys, what do you think? We may make adjustments at timeouts. And I just try to you know, manage the game as much as I, I, uh, the best I can. Uh, going into the game, the odds are not with uh, LSU as far as winning. So what is the mentality that you guys are having that's going to make this game different from yeah. the rest of the, of well, the game? Great question. The odds win against us against Yale. They win against us against Merlin. I think everybody picked us to lose because of our situation, the adversity these guys have gone through. But I can tell you what, these guys, it just, you know, this is a close group. And they respect one another. Uh, they work hard. They give themselves to, uh, to us coaches. And they, they want to win. You know, we know everybody's, I think our chances, everybody's picking us to, you know, not advance. But, hey, we can't control that. All we can control is our preparation and what we do to get ready to play the outstanding Michigan State team. We will be ready. You talked about the Maryland matchup coming down to rebounding and getting to the glass. Where do you, where do you see the difference? Because you guys are, again, pretty similar statistics. Yeah. yeah, I think it's going to be uh, same motto. Hey, we got to attack the paint. We want to protect the paint. That was the, you know, kind of our motto going into that game. You know, we got to do a good job of uh, getting in the lane and, and trying. That's what we've done all year. We're not going to change. You can't change. You know, no reason to try to change, you know, what you've been successful with. So we'll try to make sure we uh, do a great job in the paint, get paint touches. That's one of our game standards every game. And then we got to do a great job of protecting it, uh, get back in transition, like I said earlier, and protecting our paint. Yeah, we, we talked about it. You know, I think you know, sometimes coaches say, okay, if a kid gets two fouls, as you set him in the first half, and, and we can't go home. It's like timeouts. We might as well use them all. We might as well use a foul. But we, you know, so, you know, you get three, that's different. So, you know, we may let them play a little bit, trust them a little bit more, and play with two fouls, depending on who the player is, you know. Uh, so that's what we talked about that. Uh, Coach, you guys always talk about paint touches. It's been a consistent uh, factor in your guys' strategy this year. But, but how much can this team, I guess, maybe improve in, in transition? How do you view your transition offense, fast break points, things like that? Well, well the key, uh, we, we're pretty good at transition, but you got to get the rebound. If you, wanna, <laughs> you, know, you don't want to keep getting it out of the net. You know, so what we try to do, if we, if we have great defensive possessions, you know, get some stops, 
and then we rebound the ball, we can get out of transition. We're athletic, our bigs can run, our guards can make plays in transition. So that's the whole key to transition offense. He, you know, and, and then if, even if they do score, we can still run on make sometime. But we'd rather run, you know, getting stops and rebounding the ball, you know, on misses. That's what we like to do. Michael, you get a roster full of closers, you know, recruiting in these tight games. Is that something that's inherent in the kids, or do you guys develop through your six minute games and you develop it through the course of a season like this where you have so many tight games? Well, I, I think it's, it's, it's the character of these guys when you look at it. You know, we've got some guys that have been winners, you know, in their high school careers. And, so that really helps, you know, when you got a, guys that have ability to make plays uh, off the bounce or off the path. I mean, for instance, Trey Mike can go create his own shot or a great shot for his teammates. Skylar Mays can do the same. Javante can do the same. Nas is able to go in the post or create off the bounce. So we got several guys that can make plays. And that, that, that's great. That's, when you have that as a coach, that makes your job a lot easier. Last one. <laughs> it's, uh, Jimmy Butler said that he was pressing a little bit. Is that something that you guys have noticed? Yeah, we, we talked to him about that. You know, I just told him, just play with confidence. You know, he's got a lot of confidence. And, uh, you know, it's one thing, if you have, you know, offensively, if you have a good shot, take it. You know, that's what we want to do. I want him to be aggressive. You know, that's his nature. You know, when he plays, he's, he's really good when he's aggressive. We don't want to play a passive. We told him, hey, just stay aggressive. That's, the, that's what we want him to do. Anything else? Yeah, we just want to oh, go ahead. Big picture. I, mean, I imagine you probably pass this in your mind, but you understand because you've been in Sweet 16 before as an assistant. Like, the farther you go, the more media scrutiny there is, and your kids are going to be asked all these questions that they've already been asked for the last couple weeks. Are you still talking about how to prepare them for that, or how to? I mean, do you address that with them at all as to how to face that onslaught? You know, or is, do you feel like it's already it's already settled? Well, no, I mean, you're right. I think the, the more success you have, the more you know, scrutiny or questions you're going to be asked, whatever. But I think our guys, we, we, we just, again, we, we're going to stay in the moment. That's all we can We only control what we control. And that's, the, you know, getting better every day and preparing for who our next opponent is. We can't control the you know, peripheral noise, uh, you know, what's out there. But we, all we can do is control what's in our, you know, our locker room and our huddles and, you know, and just get better every day. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thanks. it. Uh -huh.